Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Swordmaster Jingliu has returned to the Shenzhou, bringing combat mechanics to show off her incredible prowess and Marastruck persona. This Jingliu guide will cover her kit and traces, idolins, best relic and light cone builds, team synergies, and gameplay tips to show you how to maximize her fearsome power. Let's begin. With this blade as my core, the inner self is purged. Jingliu is a 5-star ice destruction unit whose gameplay is focused on entering her spectral transmigration state, during which she consumes the HP of your allies and has self-buffing mechanics to enable her insane damage. She's a very strong DPS with relatively easy to use abilities. Let's review how her kit works and some gameplay mechanics to keep in mind. To start, Jingliu's skill has a normal and enhanced mode. Her normal skill consumes one skill point to deal single target damage, regenerate 20 energy, and generate one Syzygy stack. If she obtains two Syzygy stacks, Jingliu enters the spectral state which enhances her skill. The enhanced version now deals blast damage and consumes one Syzygy stack instead of consuming a skill point. It also generates 30 energy. Meanwhile, her ultimate also deals blast damage and generates one Syzygy stack. The Syzygy stack can be generated whether she's inside or outside her spectral state, but generally speaking, it's ideal to ult while her spectral state is active due to its additional buffs. If you opt to ultimate while she's outside the spectral state to get the Syzygy stack or if it can end the fight sooner, just remember Remember that it won't receive the spectral state buffs, so it'll have much lower damage potential. Jingliu's talent is where all of the details of her spectral transmigration state can be found. The description is a long block of text, so let's break it down. Again, upon getting two Syzygy stacks, she enters the spectral state, which increases the maximum Syzygy stacks obtainable to three, and does a 100% action advance to let her instantly take her next turn. Note that this instant turn also causes buff or effect durations applied on her to count down faster, so depending on your teammates, you might find yourself having to refresh them sooner on Jingliu as well. During the spectral state, she gives herself a huge crit rate bonus, reaching up to 50% crit rate at talent level 10. This is essential to boosting her damage output, and it greatly affects her build goals since we can instead prioritize stacking more crit damage from her relic stats instead. Then, whenever she attacks during this state, she consumes 4% of her other allies' max HP. In exchange, Jingliu's attack is increased based on 540% of the total HP consumed. This attack increase is capped at a certain percent percentage of her base attack. Let's do some simple maths here. On her signature light cone and talent level 10, the maximum attack she'd be able to gain is 2,269. To actually get that max attack increase, her allies would need a combined total of 10,500 HP. Reaching high HP on your units is within practical reach with a fair amount of investment, though lower level players will of course have to wait and farm for upgrades and resources. Note as well that this HP drain will trigger specific effects that depend on losing HP. For example, Blade's follow-up stacks will increase as you can see here, and it even triggers the Longevous Disciples 4-piece effect. If there are any similar abilities that require losing HP in the future, Jingliu should likely trigger them as well. Since Jingliu also doesn't consume skill points while in this state, she will have relatively low SP consumption for a DPS, which really helps with your team's SP economy and gives her more flexibility with team building. If Jingliu goes back to zero Syzygy stacks, she exits the Spectral state, and you'll have to obtain two stacks again to reactivate it. So as you can imagine, her gameplay is mainly concerned about staying in her spectral state as much as possible and maximizing the damage she can deal while it's active. Her ultimate is a huge factor as well in letting her stay longer in the spectral state since it's the only way you can get Syzygy stacks while it's active. Depending on how much energy she can get, whether from defeating enemies or external energy sources, Jingliu can extend her spectral state longer than usual. Another tip is that if you're down to your last Syzygy stack and doing an enhanced skill will fully recharge your energy, you can spam your ult right before her turn ends. This will make her cast her ultimate right after, but since her turn hasn't ended, she's still in the spectral state even with zero Syzygy stacks, so the ultimate still takes advantage of all the buffs. Then it'll create one Syzygy stack, which prolongs your spectral state by another turn. Moving on, using Jingliu's technique creates a dimension around her that freezes enemies in the open world. Upon entering combat while it's active, she instantly generates 15 energy, one Syzygy stack, and has a 100% base chance to freeze enemies. This is helpful for ramping her damage window sooner and the freeze gives you nice crowd control at the start of battle. Let's also take a look at her ascension and bonus traces. Jingliu's Ascension 2 ability gives her a 35% effect resistance bonus during spectral transmigration state to help resist enemy debuffs, particularly crowd control debuffs. Then her Ascension 4 ability makes Transcendent Flash, which is her normal skill, advance her next action by 
by 10%. It's a small bonus to help her reach her spectral state sooner. Lastly, her Ascension 6 ability gives a 20% ultimate damage increase during her spectral transmigration state. As for her stat bonuses, she gets HP, speed, and crit damage. This marks the first character who can get speed traces, which will help with your target speed goals, and the crit damage complements her spectral state's crit rate buff. For Jinglo's traces leveling priority, level up her skill, talent, and ultimate all together, though her skill is the most important of them all. Then you can ignore her basic attack since she won't be using it anyway. Jingle is very powerful at E0, but let's take a look at what her idolins add. E1 has two effects. First, it increases her crit damage when using her ult or enhanced skill, which is pretty straightforward. This by itself already provides a 5-7% to baseline damage increase. Second, if she's only attacking a single target, then she'll deal additional damage based on 100% of her attack to that single target. When this does trigger, her attacks can end up being around a 40% damage increase from E0, which makes her hit really hard in single target scenarios. However, it's always important to remember that the additional attack only triggers in single target. As such, the effective damage increase will be much lower when you'll often be up against multiple enemies and many bosses can summon and resummon minions. That said, if you're debating between her signature light cone and E1, I'd personally recommend her light cone first, especially since it has a higher pull chance, it's a significant upgrade over other light cone options, and the damage increase will be more consistent. E2 increases her enhanced skill damage by 80% after using her ultimate. E3 increases her ult and talent levels. E4 increases the attack conversion rate of her HP drain while also raising its cap, further boosting the potency of her enhanced attacks if her allies' HP are high enough. E5 increases her skill and basic attack levels. And lastly, E6 gives Jingliu one Syzygy stack when she enters her spectral state, and it increases the maximum Syzygy stacks obtainable to 4 instead of 3, allowing her to stay in the state for even longer. It also gives her a 50% crit damage bonus when it's active. Unsurprisingly, all these idols are centered around increasing her damage output and making her even deadlier. Now let's move on to her relic build, starting with her stat preferences. Since Jingliu has a high innate crit rate buff, your body piece will most likely want crit damage while getting crit rate from substats, though it's possible in very rare scenarios that a crit rate body piece could still work as long as you won't overcap on crit rate. She has 5% default crit rate and a 50% crit rate bonus at talent level 10, so that leaves a gap of 45% crit rate you can fill up from relic stats and teammate buffs. Generally speaking, having around 30% base crit rate is a pretty good target. For her her feet piece, speed and attack can both work as the former gives faster turn frequency while the latter makes her attacks deal more raw damage. I generally recommend speed in most cases, but if you have external speed buffs helping her or attune Bronya to efficiently advance her, then attack could make a very good case too. For her planar sphere, go for ice damage boost. Then for her link rope, go for attack percent. As for substats, you're mainly looking for crit damage, crit rates, speed, and attack. Get as much speed as you need to hit your desired breakpoint or target and avoid overcapping on crit rate. HP percent defense percent and effect resistance at least give her a bit more survivability but are obviously lower priority. As for her relic sets, the 4-piece Hunter of Glacial Forest gives ice damage bonus and a 25% crit damage bonus for 2 turns after using her ultimate. However, 2-piece sets of ice damage, attack, or speed can still be competitive and more efficient to farm since they give you more flexibility in choosing pieces with the right main stats and potentially better substats than a 4-piece combo. Another interesting option is the 4-piece Genius of Brilliant Stars. Ignore the 2-piece effect since the 4-piece effect is the relevant buff which lets the user ignore 10% of the enemy's defense defense and 10% more if they have a quantum weakness. Due to how it scales, defense ignore effects can be very, very strong, especially when combined with defense shredding allies or effects like Pela or Jingliu's signature light cone. If you have Silver Wolf, you can even implant a quantum weakness on enemies who already have an ice weakness in order to force the relic's maximum effect. In certain conditions, this can actually be the best performing set. But in terms of farming efficiency, it may not be the best route for you, especially when two-piece combos are still very good and easier to farm, though that will ultimately ultimately be for you to decide. As for planar ornaments, the Rudolent Arena set is her best option. It gives 8% crit rate and she can very easily hit the 70% crit rate requirement thanks to her self buff. The skill damage is preferable as it's the larger portion of her damage source. It also shares a simulated universe world with a broken keel set, a generally good set for many support units, so it's very efficient for farming. The space ceiling station and inert sal soto are still viable alternatives that are marginally worse but can close the gap with better substats. However, Space Link Station is more efficient to farm than the Sal Soto since it also shares a world with the Fleet of the Ageless, another great all-around support set. 
Moving on, let's review her recommended light cone options. I Shall Be My Own Sword is Jingliu's best light cone by a significant margin, around 15% better than an S5 Fall of an Eon. On top of the crit damage bonus, she's always guaranteed to get the maximum damage bonus buff by consuming three other allies' HP in her spectral state. Getting max stacks also lets her attack ignore the enemy's defense. By itself, the defense ignore is already great, but combined with other defense debuffs, it gets even more value. While this light cone isn't required to make her strong, it's it's undeniably a very powerful and specialized light cone for her. Your next default and still very good option would be on the fall of an Eon. You can purchase and max superimpose it from her to store, making it very accessible for all players. It's got high base stats, a huge attack buff, and a damage bonus buff after breaking an enemy, assuming you can consistently break enough. Then you can better maximize its full damage potential, but if not, the output can fluctuate. Something irreplaceable is the standard banner 5 star light cone. It has worse damage potential versus a max superimposed fall of an eon but it's still viable if you have it and it does have a self-healing effect for a bit more survivability however the damage bonus effect requires getting hit or defeating an enemy and only lasts one turn so its consistency will be more situational on the combat scenario if you have the signature light cones of dan hung and blade those will also generally just be stat sticks for jing liu dan hung's light cone requires the user to do basic attacks which jing liu doesn't and the blade light cones damage buff can only be triggered if jing liu gets attacked since she can't consume her own hp HP, which is also inconsistent. For 4 star options, Secret Vow and Under the Blue Sky are her most viable choices, preferably with high superimpositions to be closer to the fall of an Eon's performance. Secret Vow's second damage bonus effect won't really get much uptime since you want to keep Jing Liu at high HP, but it still gives a permanent damage bonus which is nonetheless useful for her. Then Under the Blue Sky gives a permanent attack buff and a conditional crit rate bonus upon defeating an enemy. As long as Jing Liu won't overcap on crit rate, then it's still going to be fine, and it can be quite helpful if you're having a hard time getting crit rate substats. However, since the fall of an Eon is already free and superimposable, it's generally just better to stick with it instead if you don't have her signature light code. Moving on, let's review Jing Liu's team comps and synergies. Jing Liu will typically run a hyper carry template which consists of having a combo of two harmony and or nihility supports and a survival support. If you prefer more comfort, you can run two survival supports at the cost of sacrificing damage output. It's also possible to run a dual carry team which I'll touch on later as well. Since Jing Liu has low SP consumption, that will be very helpful in your team's SP management. However, she'll also chip away at your team's HP, so you definitely want comfortable enough survival units. Note as well that since her action advanced mechanic can cause applied buffs on her to expire faster, you'll have to be more conscious about buff durations on her. While teammates that apply debuffs on the enemy are less concerned about this, or buffs from Fu Xuan's field which are dependent on Fu Xuan's turn rather than Jing Liu's. Let's go through paths and teammate preferences. For Harmony supports, Bronya and Tingyun are the highly recommended options. Bronya gives huge damage-related buffs, can cleanse an ally, and most importantly, her advanced forward effect lets Jing Liu front load more damage or even let her gain Syzygy stacks sooner. However, be mindful of Bronya's buff durations and your team's HP since advancing Jing Liu's attacks will lead to faster HP drain. Bronya can have stricter SP management, especially if you don't have her E1 or signature light cone, so it can be more challenging to fully maximize her, though the results are certainly worth it. You'll also have to do some speed tuning if you're aiming for a slow or fast Bronya build. On the other hand, Tingyun also provides useful damage related buffs and more importantly she can battery Jing Liu to help speed up her ultimate recharge. She's also a naturally SP positive unit with easier gameplay management. Tingyun is also currently on Jing Liu's banner so that's more chances of getting Eidolons to further improve her utility. Jing Liu also appreciates damage percent bonuses rather than attack which Bronya and Tingyun both provide. Meanwhile, Asta is still an okay choice for Jing Liu. While her attack buff loses is some potency, since Jing Liu already buffs her own attack, Asta still provides speed to your entire team and she has great fire breaking capabilities. Yukong gives big attack and crit buffs and has some offensive potential, however due to her buff duration mechanics you will have to speed tune her to properly give Jing Liu the buffs. Yukong's crit rate buff is also more likely to overcap on Jing Liu. As for her nihility supports, Pela or Silverwolf are very highly recommended. Pela's defense shred targets all enemies, which complements Jing Liu's blast attacks for maximizing multi-target damage. And if you get her E4, she can also reduce the enemy's ice resistance by 12%, which further amplifies Jing Liu's damage. She's also a great skill point generator, can remove most enemy buffs if needed, and her team-wide effect hit rate bonus helps other teammates that also want EHR stats. 
On the other hand, Silverwolf also shreds defense and applies various debuffs, though these are single target oriented versus Pela's AoE application. But Silverwolf has the very useful utility of weakness implant, which can help Jing Liu deal more damage and overall help break enemies faster. You can use Silverwolf to enable a triple ice team or dual ice quantum team. Combining ice and quantum breaks are particularly great for crowd controlling enemies. And as discussed previously, their defense shred effects are even more potent when combined with Jing Liu's signature light cone, the four piece quantum them set or both. Walt can also work as he can slow enemies, amplify their damage taken, break imaginary weak enemies efficiently, and deal some good damage himself. Still, Pela or Silverwolf generally have better support synergy for Jing Liu. Then you'll need to keep your team alive with survival supports. Abundance units will help counter the HP drain of Jing Liu and keep your team at high health. Bailu's invigoration effect and strong healing are quite comfortable and she can increase your entire team's max HP, which can help further maximize Jing Liu's self-attack buff. Her emergency revive can also come in clutch in some situations though she lacks debuff cleansing that other abundance units have. Locha provides strong healing on top of debuff cleansing and enemy buff removal, so even if he doesn't have very high HP to sacrifice for Jing Liu, his utilities make him extremely useful and very comfortable nonetheless. Then for the most recent addition, Lynx has great healing with very useful debuff removal and prevention effects with Eidolons. However, since her survival response buff increases the aggro of destruction units, be careful when using her with Jing Liu, as you might put her at more risk of dying from the increased aggro. If you have none of them, especially as a new player, Natalia Tasha is your default free-to-play option with solid healing and a single target debuff cleanse. With enough investment, she can still do the job well enough. Alternatively, you could go for a preservation support. Fushuan redirects damage to herself, reduces damage taken, buffs everyone's crit rate, has debuff prevention effects, and has minor healing for the entire team, which is a lot of utility. She also increases your entire team's max HP, which will help maximize Jing Liu's attack buff. So you're working against time to ensure that you can beat the enemy before your team reaches dangerously low HP levels from both enemy attacks and Jing Liu's HP drain. Note as well that Fu Xuan's field will not reduce the HP drain. Jepard is a viable choice for his team-wide shielding, but one noticeable concern is his shield duration and Jing Liu could expire faster because of Jing Liu's action advance whenever she enters a spectral state. He also has no healing utility, so without another healer, you have to rely on constant shield uptime to protect your allies while they're slowly being drained by Jing Liu. It's a similar case for Fire Trailblazer, except you'll have to rely more on his taunting to keep the damage directed towards him instead. Lastly, March's shield is single target, so that's one caveat already as enemy AoE attacks can especially be a huge pain. However, if she's built with a freeze and break playstyle that can consistently disable your enemies, she could still be viable. It's certainly trickier, but doable in theory. And by manipulating enemy aggro with her shield, she can still direct many enemy attacks away from squishier units. As stated before, you could run two damage dealers on the team for a dual carry combo. For instance, Blade has really interesting synergy with Jing Liu, since her teammate HP Drain will give Blade stacks to make him do follow-up attacks more frequently. In a dual carry setup, single target buffers will be more hard pressed to maximize their potential. As such, units that can debuff enemies or can do team-wide buffs may be more preferable. For example, Payless Defense Tread will apply to all enemies, so both of your carries' damage will be amplified, unlike Ting Yun, who can only buff one ally at a time. If you want to to learn more about specific characters, do check out my full dedicated guides on them. Lastly, I checked her auto battle behavior to see how well the AI can maximize her kit. And to keep it short, it's pretty bad, with two specific behaviors that are problematic. First, she will use her ultimate ASAP when it's fully charged. Unfortunately, this can work against you since even if she's not in her spectral state, she can use her ultimate. While at least it does generate a Syzygy stack, the attack will not be affected by the crit rate buff, attack buff, and her Ascension 6 ability's ultimate damage damage bonus, all of which significantly lowers its damage potential. For damage dealers, the AI seems generally programmed to ult as soon as it's ready, so it's not a specific problem to Jing Liu, but it can impact her ult damage by a lot, unfortunately. Another issue is that Jing Liu may sometimes do a basic attack, which is a huge waste of her turn. In this example, there was still one SP left for Jing Liu to use while she was in her normal state, but rather than using her skill, she does a basic attack instead, which for obvious reasons is a big no-no. Perhaps the AI prioritizes a basic attack when skill points are low. Unfortunately, given the AI's poor SP management, this is more likely to occur. And if you pair her with certain supports like Pela or Bronya, who are some of her best teammates, the AI programming is just bad as well for them, so the whole team just severely underperforms. Jing Liu would still pass in just easy to mid-difficulty combat scenarios, but manually playing will undoubtedly have a very huge difference on her damage and efficiency.
All in all, Ice Mommy certainly showed me what made her the sword master of the Shenzhou Lo Fu. She outputs very impressive damage, which isn't surprising seeing as how our previous destruction units also have very good reputations. Her low SP consumption and straightforward gameplay makes her relatively friendly to use while still leaving enough room to further optimize rotations and team synergies for more advanced players. You do need a bit more awareness in terms of managing buff uptimes and your team's HP, but the payoff is definitely worth it. And if you're also a new player who wants a DPS that's a worthwhile investment to help carry you up to the game's hardest content, then Jingliu will be a fantastic pickup. Let me know in the comments what you think of Jingliu, whether you've tried her out or if you've already got her on your account. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!